So the moderator recognizes Steve Klimkowski, Executive Director of Finance and Church Treasurer for a report on agenda item 33. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Good morning, Church. I am grateful for this opportunity to meet with you again. I brought the clicker today. I bring before you this morning the recommendation for our fiscal year 2023 budget. This budget pertains to the 12-month period beginning October 1st of this year through September 30, 2023. The recommendation totals $18,289,248 and represents a 4% increase over last year's budget. Over the remainder of this presentation, I will unpack for you the context and considerations that undergird this proposal. There's a lot of moving parts now up here with this clicker. Let's see here. The goals for the annual budget are always the same. First, the budget is aimed at sustaining and advancing our mission while ensuring its long-term financial stability. We carefully manage the ongoing tension between today's mission needs and tomorrow's mission capacity. It is also paramount that we honor the intent of our donors. We understand that we are entrusted with your gifts and are expected to steward those funds in a manner that glorifies God and honors the body of Christ. Accordingly, we strive to provide a program of stewardship that upholds your giving intent and all its holy and faithful design. While the goals for our budget remain the same from year to year, each new budget year brings its own unique challenges, and 2023 proved to be a particularly exacting. To better understand that challenge, I thought it would be helpful to provide you with an overview of our giving and funding paradigm. There are two basic types of gifts in the nonprofit sector, designated and undesignated gifts. Designated gifts are given for a particular purpose, as stipulated by the donor. That would be your gifts to specific covenant programs, such as Covenant World Relief, Paul Carlson Partners, the Minister's Crisis Fund, or Disaster Relief Initiatives. These funds are accounted for separately and are only applied to expenses related to that specific ministry. Over the past five years, Covenanters have been quite generous with their designated giving, averaging $8.7 million annually, and even recently have contributed over $800,000 towards humanitarian aid to the people of Ukraine. Undesignated gifts have no donor stipulation or restrictions. The funds are pooled and can be used for any allowable purpose at the discretion of the organization. Undesignated giving is the primary funding source of our mission and ministry budget, the very budget you will be voting on today. Now, there is often a misconception that undesignated giving only goes towards the operational and administrative expenses of covenant offices. Actually, the great majority of our undesignated giving goes directly into our five mission priorities. My predecessor and friend, Paul Hawkinson, often referred to undesignated giving as the lifeblood of our mission budget. That giving also backs other important initiatives, such as the Covenant Pension Plan liability, our executive board and search committees, and also helps pay for Covenant events, like this gather. Finally, it is important to note that a large portion of our undesignated giving is comprised of the funds raised by our global personnel. And I want to give a shout out to our global personnel. What they do is simply amazing. Not only do they enter into places of scarcity and tears to bring the richness and joy of the gospel, they also raise 
all the funds needed to support the cost of their mission. Can you imagine how different those two skill sets are? Yet they accomplish it year after year after year. Moreover, beginning this fiscal year, they are raising an additional 10% annually to help cover the cost of the mission support they receive through Serve Globally. Our global personnel are truly wonderful mission friends. For the remainder of this presentation, we are going to dial in on undesignated giving only. As I have noted, it is the only giving included in the operation budget or the operating budget. This chart details a seven year view of our actual and projected undesignated giving from 2017 through 2023. What is immediately apparent in this chart is how flat our giving trend is ranging between 10.5 and $11 million annually. As you can imagine, it is difficult to grow our mission when the provision for that mission is not growing. We also utilize affiliate fees in other income in the funding of our mission budget. Like our giving, there has been little to no growth in fees and income. The dotted line at the top of the chart details our year-by-year -year total budget spend. On average, the sum of giving plus affiliate fees, designated here as the total length of the blue and green stack bar columns, amounts to 86% of our total operating budget. The remainder, as indicated by the gap between the stack bar columns and the dotted line, is the amount of our budget that is funded by our reserves. Now, the reason I've taken us down this rabbit hole is to highlight and speak to that growing gap between our mission provision and our mission spend. As this chart details, our total mission spend is rising again as we return to pre-pandemic levels of mission activity. The FY23 budget recommendation, the furthest dot on the far right, represents a growth rate of 4.16% annually over the pandemic low 2021 budget. Now, if our giving and income totals were trending upward as well, we might be okay. However, that is clearly not the case. In fact, our giving and income trends are even softer than this chart portrays. As I noted a few minutes ago, a few moments ago, the funds raised by our global personnel fall under the category of undesignated giving. In this slide, the white segment of the stack bar columns represents that portion of giving. Now, because those funds cover the entire cost of the global personnel mission budget, which is included in the top line, the net impact of global personnel giving and expenses is neutral to the budget. It's a wash. Accordingly, for the sake of analysis, we gain the clearest view of the, of the provision actually available to the base mission budget by removing the global personnel dollars from both spending and income, as illustrated in this slide. Here is where we gain the truest view of the trends that underlie our budget shortfall. Whereas the earlier charts indicated that the trend in mission provision is flat, we see here that mission provision is actually in decline. In fact, our advancement team is projecting the FY23 budget will see $700,000 less in undesignated giving than was projected for FY22. This results in the smallest amount of budget provision since 2016. This analysis also illuminates the underlying trend in our total budget spend. Yes, the FY23 budget proposal reflects a return to more normal levels of mission activity and results in a significant budget deficit. However, when we strip out the global personnel budget, which again is fully funded, the 2023 budget recommendation is over $200,000 less than the 2018 actual spend. This slide represents the five-year trend numerically. 
and well highlights that the increasing budget shortfall is mainly caused by a decline in mission provision, not an increase in spending. Now I want to land there for a couple of minutes so that I can provide you with more detail around the FY23 budget recommendation. Because of the increasing budget shortfall, the Covenant Office's leadership team is doing what we can to tighten our belts and live within the means that our churches and donors provide to us. Accordingly, the FY23 budget recommendation assumes no compensation increase for staff, despite the inflationary environment, has frozen or made adjustments to seven and a half open positions, and assumes no expansion of mission other than a couple of items I will highlight for you. We are doing our best to do more with less. The core mission investment spend is nearly 5% greater than FY22. The developed leader's budget reflects much needed investment in staff to expand their reach and capabilities in caring for our pastors. The shared services budget is up a bit as we continue to do our work to adequately support a more digital denomination as, been, as has been on display this weekend and a more hybrid work environment. I would note that the spend is 1.8% less than in FY21. Also, please note that the figures in this slide differ some from those in your delegate notebook, as we have begun fully reflecting the cost of shared services support required by each mission area. We expect to plant approximately 15 new churches in FY23, which continues to be below our historical pace of church planting activity. Accordingly, external appropriations in support of church plants are reduced by nearly 8% from the FY22 budget, although still ahead of 2021 levels. Appropriations to our mission friends increased by 2.4% over FY22. The global personnel budget is up 3%, and we are grateful to be able to continue our support of North Park University and North Park Theological Seminary at a level of $1 million annually. Undesignated giving, which we, had, which we have discussed at length today, is projected to decline by over 6% from last year's budget. Affiliate fees are projected to be flat over last year. And as I shared yesterday, we typically draw 10% of our bequest fund reserves into our annual budget. That would amount to $937,000 in FY23. However, even after that 10% bequest draw, total FY23 income fell short of total expenses by $2.4 million, nearly the equivalent of our current general reserve fund balance. Accordingly, we opted to make an additional 10% bequest draw to help fund the budget. Now bear in mind that many organizations use a lot more of their bequest income every year than we do. This extra draw may be a little different for us, but it certainly is not an, uncon an unconventional funding decision. With the additional funding from our bequest reserves, the proposed budget projects a mission deficit of approximately $1.46 million. We plan to fund that with our general reserves. Much like your local church context, we take on significant annual funding risk in our mission and ministry budget. We have always committed to funding our mission priorities with a deep sense of trust in God's ongoing provision through the faithful giving of our member churches and donors. Our mission structure is designed to serve our churches, conferences, pastors, and members, and our annual budget process has traditionally supported that structure regardless of whether it is fully funded at any given time. However, things are about to change a bit. In the fall of 2020, the executive board approved a new policy requiring a cash balance budget beginning with fiscal year 2024. That policy is aimed at galvanizing our denomination around a stewardship endeavor that will help assure our financial sustainability far into the future. Accordingly, we will be bringing forth a balanced budget recommendation at this time next year. 
However, should the recent trends in undesignated giving persist, it is difficult to imagine achieving a sustainable balanced budget without a significant restructuring of the Covenant Office's mission or team. We simply can no longer afford our current structure. You may recall that the Strategic Advisory Team, the SAT, <clears throat> grappled with this issue in the course of their work in 2020 and 2021. Certainly under the leadership of our new president, we need to tackle this issue again. That said, we need to give President Swanson Dreheim the time and space to get her hands fully around the Covenant Office's structure, teams, resources, and processes. Accordingly, we plan to leave no rock unturned in our endeavor to balance the Covenant budget next year. We are considering all possibilities, including the potential for new means of income and funding. Please know, we are very grateful for your faithful giving and support. As I noted yesterday, without you, we can accomplish very little. I would ask you to pray for us, that God will provide wisdom and light in our funding and budget endeavors. I would also ask you to reflect upon this presentation today. Ultimately, it is our members and churches who determine what amounts and what kinds of ministry, mission, and support they want from covenant offices and how much provision will be given to fund those activities. Clearly, the present level of provision is not sufficient for all we are attempting to do. We are joined in a three-strand strong mission. We hope that every church will consider supporting that shared mission with a full tithe, 6.5% to the denomination and 3.5% to their conference. I encourage all of you, inquire with your local church. Ask them where they stand in this support. Last year, 244 of our local churches provided no giving, no monetary support to the denomination. 244. That is nearly 30% of our churches. And unfortunately, that number has been rising. I must admit that I was surprised by that number when I first joined Covenant Offices in 2019. My first thought was, we need to do a better job of helping our churches to understand the denomination's value add. However, a second and more powerful emotion ultimately swept up in me. How is this fair? How is this fair to the churches that are supporting the denomination? Shouldn't all Covenant churches bear the cost? share the cost of the activities, programs, and resources that benefit them and their ministries. And honestly, why would any church choose not to be a part of sending missionaries, planting new churches, enabling pastoral care and credentialing, disaster relief efforts, writing injustices, creating curriculum materials for children, making certain that the past, present, and future covenant pastors are cared for in their retirement years. Who wouldn't want to be a part of making all that possible? Those activities comprise the very best of all we do together. And look, we know that many of our churches are struggling right now, and we join them, and we ache for them in those struggles. However, God does great things with the smallest and most meager of faithful offerings. Imagine if each of our churches gave just a bit more than they are presently providing to the denomination. How about 1.3%? One God in three persons. It's memorable. <laughs> if each of our churches gave just an additional 1.3% of their budget to the covenant, that would amount to $5 million in additional mission provision. Not only would that sustain our current level of mission activity, but it would create sufficient margin and capacity to better serve our churches, invest in new mission opportunities, provide services we so badly want to provide, like English to Spanish translation, and increased church planting support for our conferences. It would further our mission in bringing the light and love of Christ to the world. 
I want to close by thanking you for the daily confidence you place in us to shepherd the overall financial strategies of the covenant. We promise you that we will do our best to faithfully steward God's provision to his church. So Madam Moderator, I bring before this meeting a recommendation from the Finance Committee of the Executive Board and from the, count, and from the Covenant Council of Administrators to approve the 2023 20, Mission and Ministry Budget of $18,289,000 $248. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. The motion before you is for the approval of the fiscal year 2023 mission and ministry budget of $18,289,248. It does not require a second as it comes from the executive board. Are you ready for the question? I'm checking to make sure there's no one at a microphone. Online. Yes, can we check online to see if there's anyone online that? Yes, I, I hear the microphone. I see. Oh, yeah. okay. microphone. While we're checking on that, the moderator recognizes the delegate at, mo at microphone four. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Denise Smith from the Alaska Conference. Um, I have a couple of small questions. Well, could, I, could I ask you to please speak directly into that microphone and speak loudly? Our online people are sometimes having a hard time hearing us. Thank Certainly. You. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Moderator. My name is Denise Smith from the Alaska Conference, and I have a few small questions about the budget proposal. Proceed. Yes. Uh, my first question is uh, actually a comment. I greatly appreciate the um, freezing of staff positions and salaries. Those are challenges that a lot of our churches are also experiencing, so I appreciate that you're doing that at this level as well. Um, but my two questions are, what will be left in the reserves if 1.6 million from the reserves is used for this budget? I'm curious about the state of the reserves after the use of the 1.6 million, if that makes sense to the gentleman. And then my next question is, um, will the strategic alignment team be considering or exploring programmatic changes, which also, again, our home churches have had to do? If the budget is not balancing and we're taking from reserves, we generally have to look at and consider prayerfully, obviously, we have to consider what programs are viable or not and what changes need to be made beyond staff salaries, positions, and drawing from our reserves. Do those make sense to you, sir? Yes, yeah, so those Thank are, you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Those are both uh, very good questions. When I speak to um, the, the deficit being funded by our general mission reserves, it is one category of reserves. Um, and it tends to be the one that's uh, our go first go-to. Uh, we still, after that, would not only retain things like uh, additional approximately 3.8 million in general bequest reserves that are available to us. Uh, in total, there's approximately um, $9 million in bequest reserves. And so there's other areas we can go and they're available to us. And, the, and these funds, these reserves were created by gifts from our donors and they expect that their gift will go into mission. So uh, we would be allocating those dollars where they're ultimately meant to go. We also have other uh, funding mechanisms. We have a line of credit with uh, NCP to get through uh, sometimes th where things are a little tighter. Uh, but, but also, we're at work now on the funding uh, side of this. Uh, we've already begun that work, and um, our concern isn't really the, the solvency. Uh, the concern is just getting this right. So uh, there's enough, there are enough reserves in total uh, to, to carry us for a, a few years. But um, this is why we needed to address this, and, and this is why the Covenant Office leadership team is taking this very seriously, because we can see that we can only sustain this for a few more years. And then, then uh, that question becomes uh, uh, even more pertinent. 
Uh, with regard to the SAT, I don't, I don't think there's a chance would it would be called SAT again. Um, and, and I think that um, the, the Covenant Office leadership team is certainly going to have to examine the whole thing. Yes, when, I, when we talk about revisiting the structure and not being able to afford the structure, uh, that is exactly what we anticipate doing is just a top to bottom review of what are we called to do and how are we called to serve by our churches? Uh, what's the best way of doing that? What are the priorities that our churches and donors are communicating to us? Because quite honestly, the funding uh, reflects your priorities. When, when our donors uh, provide much support for one area, they're saying to us, this is important to us. And when other areas aren't funded as well, the denomination is also saying, hey, Covenant Headquarters, we're, we're, not as, we're not as concerned about this. And so we're going to try to also better orient uh, what we do and how we do it uh, in full reflection of the support and the communication that's in that support. Thank you. Um, I have something online that we would like to clarify, Steve. Uh, again, how many churches give nothing to the denomination? Um, 244. 244 churches give nothing. Thank you. And the current balance of the General Reserve Fund? The current balance of the General Reserve Fund, um, no, I had it in front of me this whole time. Um, so there's a 2.4 million in general reserves. There's uh, 3.3 million in general mission bequest fund. Um, in all told, we have 8.7 in reserve uh, with our bequest reserve Th funds. Thank you. And I just want to advise the delegates that we do have uh, still on our agenda a discussion on the strategic alignment team. Uh, it's item 12. So we will be talking about that. Uh, the moderator recognizes a delegate online. Hello, this is Douglas McCann from Stone Ridge Covenant Church in Allison Park, Pennsylvania. Uh, my question is, how much would the withdrawal from reserves be if we were to give all of the staff who are not management a cost of living increase of 7%? Well, that's going to be hard for me to do that math right here. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can tell you that our total staff cost uh, it, it comprises about 70% of the cost of, uh, of the total spend at Covenant offices. And so it, that, that's a significant portion both ways where, where we, in the, the opportunity to save on our budget there is, is large, but also uh, when we try uh, to shore that up and, and provide compensation increases that reflect cost of living and that type of thing, the impact is large there as well. So that's where we have to be most thoughtful. But uh, I can certainly calculate that and provide that after the meeting. All right, thank you. Thank you. The moderator recognizes the delegate again at microphone four. Barbara Coslow, uh, Faith Covenant Church, Farmington Hills. I'm just wondering, is there any work being done or consultation with these churches who are not contributing? You know, I think, I believe Gail is going to be a ga <laughs> Okay. I can answer that. Uh, Gail Gilreath, Executive Director of Mission Advancement. Uh, of the 244 churches, we have to keep in mind that um, there's a number of those churches. We do do analysis on this. There is a number of those churches that uh, have bivocational pastors for which they're not paying their pastors or able to pay. Um, there are churches that aren't paying the, any uh, pension for their pastors. And uh, uh, there are some churches that have, have a hard time with, uh, that are considering closing. Mm -hmm. So of the 244, there is uh, a certain percentage of those churches that we really can expect um, at this point in their uh, life of their church to be giving. So I do not have the number uh, dissected, but I want you to just keep that part in mind. Okay. Thank you. The moderator recognizes the delegate at microphone one. Julia Stein Sandstrom, Holy Community Covenant Church, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh, 
I'm not going to make any sort of motion to change anything for this budget that would be uh, throwing a wrench in things. However, uh, I would strongly encourage the finance uh, committee to uh, increase pay for staff. I understand uh, that we we need to tighten our belt, and, and I believe you have our, our staff's best interest at heart. Um, however, I think it sets a poor precedent for our churches to demonstrate that that is where we can cut costs. Uh, we stand and give our colleagues and uh, our leaders standing ovations, and we appreciate their work. Uh, this, this is where the rubber meets the road in appreciating them. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. I'm thank you. I'm sure all our staff appreciates that a great deal. <laughs> um, and I also want to mention that we do always hold in reserve. If we were to have a better uh, fiscal year 23 performance than we anticipate, and, and this is something we talked about, that is the first place that that uh, better performance is going to go. Uh, is to compensating uh, our teams and and look uh, we are a team full of people that are just mission hearted and um, are doing this because we feel called by God to do it but you're right there there are economic realities that each of our families face and it's and it's not easy and um, but but God bless uh, the the teams at covenant offices because they they keep showing up and they keep giving it their all. So we would certainly like to make it possible. The moderator recognizes the delegate at microphone four. Rick Mylander, Newport Covenant, Bellevue, Washington. Thank you, Steve, for this report. Thank you for calling us out as a family to yeah, take please, care please of this. Please speak right into that microphone okay, so online can hear you. It sounds really loud from here, so. I know. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I just really appreciate Steve calling this out uh, uh, on our behalf. Uh, the other side of that equation is 20% or less of our churches do give the six and a half and three and a half. And so uh, I want to urge our delegates, by the way, our credentials report used to include number of churches participating in the number of delegates. And that's something I hope we can put back in our system, Madam Moderator. Uh, because I believe there are many churches among those who are here in this room as well as online who could go back to their churches and say, what are we giving? Um, not only are we giving nothing, but are we challenging ourselves to give the tithe? And perhaps we need to talk about it more as a tithe rather than six and a half and three and a half. We're used to tithe language. It's good language. We teach our people that in our churches. Um, and I know that we use that language nationally, but um, if we could approach this from both directions of those who are not giving, which is a real grief, of course, but common even in our churches, uh, but at the same time, if we could approach it on both of those. Delegates, please bring your, your, your I'm, I'm sorry, Madam Moderator, I would urge that uh, we encourage our delegates to bring this message home. Find out if they are among those 240-some churches who are giving nothing, and certainly urge our churches to tithe uh, beyond their local situations. Thank you so much. Thank you. I see no reason for me to repeat what the delegate just said. Are there any online? Oh. Well, we're going to go online. Do we have anybody else Nobody online? online? Nobody online. Okay. Um, I believe uh, this person was up first, so uh, the moderator recognizes the delegate at microphone three. Uh, yes, Dave Karens representing the Association of Covenant Camps and Conference Centers. One of the questions I have that I didn't, I don't think I, or I think I hope I didn't miss it, uh, but we have talked at previous annual meetings about the sale of the Covenant offices. Um, I didn't see that notice, and looking at the audit, that's about a quarter million a year in annual debt servicing. Um, wondering if there's been an update on that progress. I know it's not a great time to sell property, um, but just that's as we look at cutting expenses, as we uh, dispersed staff and now have a president that says she is relocating back to Chicago, just wondering if you can have an update and how that may impact future uh, budgets. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that question because we, we owe you all an update on that. So um, the 8303 building, 
uh, is no longer officially for sale. Uh, we took the, with, worked with the executive board, it has been taken back off the market. Uh, the executive board and the location advisory committee uh, this past year uh, affirmed Chicago as the center uh, for covenant offices or the center, the location for covenant offices. And um, so uh, we are in 8303 and people are trickling back in. Now, I don't know that that means we'll be there forever. We're, we're always, I said we're going to leave no stone unturned uh, in, in trying to figure this budget out. And, and obviously, we have equity in that building that's in bricks and mortar that could be in mission. Uh, so we obviously have to examine that. Uh, but then we'd have to find a place anyway. Uh, so we're looking at that, but just to let you know, uh, we are back in 8303 and slowly but surely getting back to business as usual. Thank you. The moderator recognizes the delegate at microphone two. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I just wanted to um, maybe propose one thing. Oh, yeah, Madam? Yeah. 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 Oh, Who my you? name. Yeah, yeah. 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 who do you represent? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Rebecca Gonzalez. I am the Executive Director of Operations for the Evangelical Covenant Church and Corporate Secretary, and I'm representing the ECC and the denominational team, and I am a member still of River City Community Church in Chicago, Illinois. All right, proceed. Thank you. Uh, I was, I was um, in thinking through the question around um, the, two, the two, over 200 churches that are not giving and the comment about the vocational pastors, um, maybe um, one thing that might be helpful or maybe not helpful, but that will give value and honor the bivocational pastor, does it might not be for the financials, but if there's a way to quantify those um, the hours or the time that they give to the mission or to their local church um, in in-kind donation, that would at least help us to give honor to the women and men who are serving their local church uh, many time in under-resourced communities to be able to quantify through in-kind donation um, their, what they are giving to the mission and to the local church. Um, and so that would be something that I would like for it to be considered so that way when we are talking about um, churches that do not give and many times are not able to afford benefits or give even a full-time employment to their pastors, we could at least see what that would quantify or what would the, be that equivalent if they did. Yeah. So just something for information um, okay. and maybe the story and the narrative could probably be a little bit different for those pastors and churches that are um, being served by, vo by vocational pastors. That's great. Thank you. And um, my, just to help my colleague um, Steve here, not that he needs any help, I think he's doing great today. Um, but from, um, from the HR lens, I do want to mention that um, Cole is committed to continue to steward um, the resources that the church has entrusted to us. And pri one of those primary resources is our human resource. Mm -hmm. um, our staff is um, they are called, and it is, I always say that call is the glue when the things get tough. Yeah. And so I'm grateful to our staff, and just know that um, through high and low, staff are at the top of our list in resources to care and shepherd and steward. And so um, when it comes to compensations, if we, if we would have reflected the increases on the budget. Ten um, seconds left. It would have been hard. I'm going <laughs> to land the plane. But in essence, what we did is that we are looking to see what the end of year, fiscal year 22 performance would be, and then make the decision on the raises then. Everybody's limited to three minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Moderator recognizes the delegate at microphone four. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, Phil Nesta from Stockton Covenant Church, uh, co-pastor. Um, and I just uh, wanted to see if we can get some clarification on the comment that the gentleman made uh, with regards to cutting things that are not supported. Um, for people of color, that kind of that means, you know, maybe things that um, in a predominantly Anglo uh, constituency, uh, maybe cutting translation. Um, what exactly, and how will you determine what things are going to be cut? 
Oh, well, Phil, thank you for your question, and, and I'm sorry I created any consternation uh, with that comment because uh, we still at Covenant Headquarters uh, invest in new mission opportunities, and, and we retain the discretion to do that. Uh, and so, on one hand, I think that we're going to look at the whole thing, but um, I also just want to affirm our commitment um, to our mosaic and resourcing it properly and and how important it is to us uh, that our mission is fully met in, in every corner of our church and is, it is accessible mm -hmm. to every okay. church and every member of that church and every pastor. And so, um, you, know, the, you know, God has called, Rebecca just uh, qualified the term call, uh, but, you know, we do believe we're called in there to help sort of manage and lead in, in what's often a mess. And, and part of straightening out that mess is to make sure, uh, particularly as Christians, that those that are undervalued, under-resourced, under-loved, uh, are met and cared for. And so uh, that, that remains very high on, on our list of priorities. And I promise you that. And I love your wife, Juana. So we'll make it happen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I don't see anyone else at a microphone. And we. All right. So are you ready for the question? Oh, we have a point of order. Oh, we, oh this is a point of order. Where is the point of point order? Of order on uh, we, have a, we have a point of order online, and the uh, parliamentarian and I are trying to figure out the question. Does a 1.3% increase, as suggested, mean going from 10.0 to 11.3 or to 10.13? We have a no hard question role here at Gather. <laughs> um, so it's out of order then? So the point of order is hard. out of order. We just didn't yeah. understand it. You know, it actually occurred to me when I was writing those words, like, what do we say to the churches? Like, I, I, I happen to be a member of a, of a church that's giving the full tithe, and I said, am, are we asking them to do that as well? I think that every church just has to uh, do what they believe God is calling them to do. And yes, if they're, if they're fully giving 10% and they can uh, give another 1.3 to the denomination, please, I, I shared with you the data today. If you have the means, uh, we have so many churches that do not. And so that's who we are as brothers and sisters. And if we can, let's do it. All right. Thank you, Steve. Yes. All right. Online. Anyone online? No, no, no. No, 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 no. We're, no. So we are, we are indeed ready for the question. Yes? Yes. All right. So the question is, are we going to approve this budget of 18289248 let us prepare. Are we ready? Is voting open? Yes. Voting is open. You have 90 seconds to vote. Paper ballots need to be passed out for those people who cannot use the AGM system. Please cast your vote. We were supposed to have someone come up and pray. We didn't do that yet. Steve, are you still in the building? Steve is in, oh, there you are, I see you. Um, I just wanna let you know that you are, there's gonna be prayer offered, so don't get too comfortable.
now closed. Again, voting online is now closed. We are waiting for the paper ballots. The results of the votes are as follows. Yes, 555, no, 28. Budget is approved. We will now call uh, the agenda item. Oh, let's pray. Oh, oh, yes, before we do that, yes. Um, the moderator recognizes, or at least asks, Karen Stein, chair of the finance committee of the covenant executive board to please come and pray for steve and for fiscal year 2023 mission and ministry operating budget thank you ma'am let us pray our creator father we love you you gave us hands to raise in prayer and praise and those hands end in fingers on which we first learned to count to 10 and 10 times 10 and 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 and beyond until most of us are lost in a fog of numbers. But you also gave us our financial team and dedicated people like Steve Klimkowski who are blessed with gifts of curiosity and insight, who can look at page after page of digits and ask what if who can see in the statistics, trends, correlations, and meaning, and can communicate that insight to the rest of us. That insight warns us of missteps and can guide us into an uncertain future, but provides us with a budget that reflects our desire to follow you. We wish to follow you with a clearer vision for our ministry. Thank you for Steve and our finance committee Chair Scott Dennis, and for the financial team, and for Gail Gilrath and the advancement team who keep our provision flowing for God's glory and for neighbors' good. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, yes, okay. There we, go. we will now.